Hello, Andrew Jackson, AJ Design Studio here. Hope everybody's well. It's been a while since I've put something together, so I had a bit of time this afternoon and thought I'd go look through my archives of uh, SolidWorks videos. And there was this model here, which is half complete, and obviously I got distracted with work or something and never completed it. So I thought I'd finish this up. It's kind of, this is a development upon another tutorial or another video, which I completed a while back now, a few years, which was like making a pillowed surface, which I'll just skip over to quickly, which is this one here, which was fairly simplistic in its approach and also doesn't work well when you have like a quite a tight pinched corner here. You can see like these uh, witnesses or wrinkles in the surface here. Um, anybody that's tried modeling something like this, I'm sure you've come across having wrinkles like where you, where you have um, a tight corner. So that's what I thought I'd look at with this model. So I'm just gonna skip over to version 6 of it because there's a couple of, pro of different approaches and I'm just going to roll back through the model and explain what I've done. You can already see there's there's a difference between this model and this one here which has got a single surface making up the corner whereas in this one we've got one, two, three, four surfaces making up the corner. Okay, And it's quite a pinched corner and the result is you don't really see any, you don't see these sort of witness lines here or wrinkles which um, quite often the case. Okay, so I'm going to roll to the beginning and I'll just explain basically what I've done. So I've created an overall control sketch. Is, this is say a quadrant of whatever product it is. And then I've made, if you watched my other videos, I've manually made a, um, a G3 style spline, degree seven, got um, one, two, three, four CVs are all lined up collinear to this line. And the same over here, one, two, three, four, collinear to this line. Uh, and then each of these control polygon segments equal. So this one's equal to this one, that, you know, vice versa. So if I change this number, it will change. I just set it up that this way in case I wanted to make it asymmetric. And then I've got a like a guide circle in the corner just to see where a true radius would lie. Because obviously this can't be a true radius and also be G3 connection. So... I'll just sort of bump around with it a bit uh, to get something that I was happy with. Uh, so that's sort of emulating a an R10, even though they start uh, back further. Sorry, not an R10, an R5, even though the the spline starts back, has to start back further to give you some relief, as you can see in the curvature plot. So then I created a plane, which is called the edge, which is basically extrusion height. So I extrude the overall control sketch. And then I've got another plane here, which is um, the pillow height above the edge here, so 1.5 millimeters. And I've created a sketch, which is our planar surface boundary. So I want a planar surface in the middle of this. And again, it has got a style spline, degree seven, Bezier curve, with eight CVs. And again, one, two, three, four, a collinear to this line. The other four are collinear to this line, giving you a G3 connection at each end. Um, I'm on 2017 here, so I don't have the torsion constraint, the G3 constraint, but you don't need that anyway because you're just lining up to a line. I could make this G4 if I wanted by uh, making this a degree degree 9 with 10 CVs and go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 in a row. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Okay. So that's the planar surface. And then make that into a surface plane. And I'm going to make a blend on one end. This is a sketch on a plane. And again, the style spline, degree four, so it's got five CVs. So one, two, three, four CVs are lined up collinear with this um, surface, and then the dimension. So again, that's a degree, degree, degree three connection there, and you can just you know change the curvature or whatever you want on the end. Then that gets extruded out to this corner. And I have done the same thing over here. And I haven't linked the values between these two blends, even though they are the same. You could link them, but again, if I made this asymmetric, you, you don't want them linked. Okay, so now I have to trim these back. I've created a sketch which runs perpendicular to this edge into the corner of our planar surface with the big line on it. And out this side here. And then I've knitted the side surface and the other top surfaces together. Now I'm going to set up some lines to create some planes where I want these these boundaries going across here and here. So there is a sketch and as you can see 40 degrees, 40 degrees. How co coincident to this, um, to the edge of the um, 
on our surface. I've created two planes through those, and I'm going to show you something here. Instead of creating, I was on this plane, if I just create a, a blend like this, I want, I can't plug in the same dimension as here, because this, obviously this curve is a, a lot longer. So, um, to get the projected dimension, I've created these CV references. Basically it's a sketch with uh, lines that are coincident to those CV points that I want to take uh, and take that dimension through onto my angled line. And I can't just extend this because this is extrude, the surface starts deviating inwards there because that's where the spline is. So the whole idea is to make this whole area a lot more relaxed and have time to turn so we don't get these wrinkles. So that corner blend, I've left, left this end free so I can specify it. So I haven't lined this CV here up with this one, but these, these two here are lined up with it, as you can see. Okay, so this one here, I can tweak the, um, the pointiness of the, the end. And corner blend here is the same. And then I've created some boundary surfaces. Four sided boundary. Just the positional constraint on two boundaries, tangent, tangent. And on this one, I've made the tangent influence 100, and this one I haven't bothered. And that's replicated over here and knitted together. Okay, and now I'm 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 going to put a, a make last two surfaces in here. So what I've done first is I want to sort of draw a curvature continuous off these const these um construction curves. So those construction curves are face curves, and those are forty percent the position on the face, forty percent. If you've never used face curves before, tools, sketch tools, face curves. You can pick a face, and then you can pick whether you want a grid or you want to you can pick a reference, like a positional reference. Yeah, so they're quite useful. It's like an ISO curve in Rhino. Okie dokie. And then I've created a 3D sketch through those. And now because those those curve these are not lines, they are splines, I can't um, make a G3 connection in my version of SolidWorks. And I can't make everything collinear to them, so I've used the curvature constraint. Curvature continuous constraint and then dimensioned um, each of the line control polygon links okay and boundary surface first boundary surface um tangent to face not curvature because i'll get wrinkles and in this direction off this edge i haven't specified tangent influence on on these ones i have 100 percent i knitted those together so i don't have to use selection manager to pick these sides and then a boundary surface here again this time i've gone tangent influence 100 percent on that direction and zero on the sides because I was getting some, some wrinkling going the end here okay and knitted it all together and then I have thickened it because in SolidWorks seems um, sometimes the your tools options image quality even though you have this cranked up as high as possible sometimes with with surface model it won't actually reflect that setting for some reason so as you can see there it just got finer so I've thickened it, thickened the part inwards, and if I just turn off the um, edges, so it's pretty, uh, it's a pretty good result. Again, depending on what your form is, if you'd made this tighter, you'd have to go through and 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 tweak your dimensions. Yeah, it just works much better than that other technique. Uh, this one here. You've just got much more space to, um, you know, the, the the curve change happens over a much bigger area. You know, it's happening it's all through here. Slowly, things are changing, so like a better result. So I thought I'd just tweak one more thing on this. Instead of um, making using a G G two um, spline through here with curvature continuous connections on each end. I thought if I made that um, that curve planar, if I swap over to here to version seven, I can actually make it uh, G3 as well. So if I jump in here, and I'm no longer using these uh, face curve references. What I am doing is in the spline, uh, made it coincident to this edge, coincident to this edge, 
and then made my one, two, three, four CVs, and then lined these ones all up along the x-axis. And over here, all these ones are lined up along the z-axis, so that gives me G3 to ish. I'm just guessing here, I can't actually check properly to see if it is G3 to the surface here, and then just controlled it with a dimension. And then if we go through to the end there, again, quite hard to evaluate. I'd probably have to drop it into Rhino or something like that and use the curvature tool or use the the um, new global uh, edge continuity tool in Rhino. So there's the zebra stripes, isn't it? It's pretty good. And also, where's my use? Use my home baked ISO bake shader and then turn on the adjustment. See what there's. You can see there, these are, these are static light lines basically. There are a few artifacts because um, of the underlying draft mesh, but I think that flows pretty good. Um, yeah, happy with that. So, um, yeah, as I said, there's one from the archives. Oh, you can see the artifacts there. That's, that's, a, that's a meshing artifact. Um, it's a shame I got don't have control over it because it'd be really nice to see what this looks like with a better quality mesh being sidetracked. Yeah, one from the archives. Yeah, if you find this useful, then maybe consider subscribing to AJ Design Studio, Andrew Jackson channel, and um, I'll put uh, this version 7 and number 6 uh, online, Google Drive, so you can download them if you want to have a look at them. Alright, thanks for watching. Have a good weekend. Cheers. Andrew Jackson.